Hey guys, Desolder Magic here, and it's time for another MTG Mistakes video. Now, if you like what you see here, well, first of all, leave a like, hit subscribe, but also uh, check out the rest of these videos. They are all in a playlist, easily visible if you click on just my channel name. I've been told by dozens of people that it is the best series on my channel. I completely agree. Well, obviously, except for the Dank Memes playlist. Those remix edits are the dankest thing you'll ever see. But this is by far the most helpful series on my channel, so I am going to start by showing some gameplay here. Now instead of showing uh, somebody making this particular mistake, which is what I usually do, I'm going to jump straight to somebody not making this mistake. So first of all, you'll see that I have a Torment of Scarabs in play. Two more in hand, but he doesn't know that. Now of course Torment says, uh, Enchant player at the beginning of Enchanted player's upkeep, that player loses 3 life, which is quite a bit, unless he or she sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card. So to prevent yourself from slowly just losing the game, you have to slowly lose the game. Well, just in a slightly different way, so you have to have, you know, cards you can throw away by discarding, or sacrifice something that's already in play. Now it's 11 to 5 and I'm badly losing, uh, not for long though, watch this. Oh look, I top deck a battle at the bridge, let's crank that up to 3 and nuke the booster. Both of the wizards drop by 1 attack power, there we go, we're back down to 1, 3, and uh, 2, 2. He draws a card, and then you might have noticed, he keeps it. And I thought, okay, what is this, a counter spell? Okay, he hits me, it's 8 to 5, I draw a land, unfortunately another battle at the bridge would have been nice. Um, so I drop another Torment. Now see, he had no idea that was coming. Now if he would have played this game out, he would have won. But now, uh-oh, we've got another one. I've got one mana left. Tetsamok gonna target one of the most powerful wizards. I'm just trying to drain him away and stall. So here comes the trigger. Boom! He discards a mountain. So that whole time he held a mountain. Now he's at five because he had to take a hit. I'm at two. He swings. Great. Uh, top deck another swamp. That's a miracle pull right there. And then obviously I'm going to play Tetsamok. I'm going to uh, kill everything with a prey target on it when he enters battlefield. Boom, there goes Gitu. Not only can he not swing, but even if he could get rid of it, he could only swing for half my health. And he has to discard again. Another mountain. Absolutely brilliant. You can see it was Mountain Gitu Mountain. And he has one card in hand. So now he plays it. Arguably a mistake, but he can recover from this um, by sacking it because he could have discarded that or he could have sacked it He realizes he basically can't win self-destructs and the game is over now a lot of people when they go to top decking They just oh they draw land like I don't need this and then they play it Obviously do not do that when torment of scarabs is in play now This would be now this would be an awfully narrow awfully specific video how not to lose to torment no, 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 I am going to expand this to you should almost never play a land when you're top decking if you don't need it. Or even if you're just close to top decking if you don't need it. So the strategy is really simple. Um, maybe they're going to force you to discard a card and if you don't, something bad will happen. That's a little narrow, but okay, you start piling up cards, they're going to think, oh, he's holding this. He has six, seven, eight mana open already. Why didn't he play it? Clearly it's a counter spell or it's some kind of removal or it's something that's relevant to a board state that isn't going on right now Nobody ever thinks that the person is smart enough to draw land because everybody knows at every FNM almost every game I've ever played Somebody's top decking and they draw land they go ah oh, and then drop it on the battlefield If you drew two lands in a row and you're playing blue people are just like well He's got two counter spells and they might play differently. They might think, oh, I've got to spam him. You know, I've got to, I've got to flood him and get past it. Or I've, I've got this hyper important creature. I've got Tetzamok. Oh crap, if I play him, he's just going to get countered. I have to throw out a dummy spell first. I got to hold on to this. This is my only chance to win. I have to not cast this yet until I can draw them into doing it or force them to discard that card. So if they're like, no, nah, I bet it's a land. He's just playing mind games. He's messing with me. I mean, they could be wrong and only about one in three cards in your deck are land. So just from a sheer probability standpoint, you probably didn't draw a land in their mind. But if they don't fall for it, okay, great. You didn't need that land. I mean, assuming you have seven in play and nothing in your entire deck costs eight, what could possibly happen? And a lot of people say, well, what if you draw another land? Then you could only drop one and oh, you're in trouble now. 
Uh, no, because if you draw another land, you drop it, and then what would you have left to cast for eight? Now, if you have an ability that's like Axe, you have something in play that can eat that much mana, then yeah, drop as much mana as you possibly can. I mean, you want to get those lands into play because like if you've got a Battle at the Bridge, Torment of Hailfire, or something that you could feed X into, Rolling Thunder, Jaya's Inferno, I mean, whatever, you know that you have an X spell, a Hydra, Walking Ballista, anything like that, then you want to make absolutely sure that you have the maximum amount of lands in play, but my logic still holds true. So your very next card is Walking Ballista. Well, then play the land. I mean, if your next card draw is a Ballista, drop the land, then drop the Ballista. If it's a land, then drop the land, hold one land in your hand, then the next card is a Ballista, then play that one. There's almost no scenario where you would actually have a lesser board state or less access to less mana by holding a land for one extra turn. Because you're either going to draw another land and then play one of them, or you're going to have the opportunity to drop that land during the very start of your sec or your first main phase the next turn. So you've got the mind games, you've got the, eh, it's a long shot, but maybe my opponent will play differently because I'm holding a card in hand. And then you've got, okay, maybe they'll be like, ah, it's time to unleash the hand disruption. I'm going to force them to discard it with Mind Rod, or I'm going to use a, you know, what, a Thought Seize or whatever to look at what's in their hand and make them discard it. Oh, whoops. They just lost that spell. Now, in the next turn, you pull some giant game-ending bomb, and they could have maybe made you discard it. I mean, the most discard and hand disruption is sorcery speed, if not all of it. But I don't know, maybe an ability or something, sack a creature, make you discard a card, you know, non-sorcery speed, I don't know. I don't think that exists in the game either, but it's just an example. They might attempt to do something about the fact that you have cards in hand and be completely mistaken. So really, I mean, there's just almost no scenario where it would backfire. So in almost any case, and just think ahead, what's in my deck? What could I pull? Do I have something that's important and has to do with land or something? Something real specific, like do they have an effect that is reduced by the number of lands I have in play? You know, all this real obscure stuff. Think about that, because if there's any reason to play it, then play it. But if there's no reason to play it, then don't. Because all you'll see is either nothing, a completely neutral, you know, alteration of the game state, or something positive will happen. They'll stop, they'll overthink something, they'll burn a card they shouldn't have, they'll wait to cast something, they'll second guess something, they'll underswing in case, oh, what if it's settled the wreckage, aetherize, aether spouts. So maybe they'll underswing because, you know, they're like, well, it's going to take me two swings anyway to kill the person. I might as well just swing with half my creatures, and then all of a sudden you draw... I don't know, Fog or some kind of Dazzling Reflection Congregate, I don't know, Dramatic Rescue, I don't, you know, just whatever. And then, whoops, now the second swing doesn't work, and they would have actually had lethal if they would have swung all out. So all you'll really see is benefits, and all you have to do is just not play a land. I mean, it's really quite simple. It's pretty easy to remember. So I couldn't find footage of this completely backfiring, but trust me, yesterday it completely backfired on somebody. They top-decked a land, played it. I top decked some garbage, I don't know, I threw it away, or I think I was forced to discard it from uh, uh, Midnight Oil. It was a bonus pull, and I'm just like, I don't need this discard. Well, also my hand size was zero. Then they top decked another land, played it, and then I top decked uh, Torment of Hailfire. Whoopsies, it's the same thing, except it's repeated every time for X, so I just absolutely maxed it out. They would have still been alive if they could have discarded those cards. Now, it says non-land permanent for sacrificing. Well, it's a land permanent now. You just converted it. Whoops. I don't know what they would have drawn for their next card, but, I mean, I was pretty low life. I think, if I recall, one lightning strike would have killed me. It was really narrow. And they were playing mono red, so they had a shot at winning the game, and they, they just blew it. And I know for a fact nothing in Red Rush costs above four. He had six lands in play. There's just no reason to have played the 7th and 8th Mountain. There is nothing in his deck that would have possibly needed that. Or I should say nothing next turn, immediately next turn that could have used it. So that is an example. I mean, I don't have gameplay footage, like I said, but that's, you know, how that works. So just remember... Hold a land if you don't need it, late game if you're top decking, even if you're just down to it. You just drew that many. Once you hit the maximum limit of the most expensive spell in your deck and the most expensive thing you would ever possibly pay for, just hold it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? So thanks for watching. Definitely check out the rest of the videos in this playlist, and I will see you guys next video.